We're going 120 Mission Gorge. We're in, we're in trouble. We can't. Well, there's no break. Okay. Mission Gorge in freeway half mile. Regarding their reputation for dependability, safety, and durability, the Toyota and Lexus brands are at the top of the list. But on a fateful day in August 2009, a distressing 911 call shocked the Toyota Corporation and served as a wake-up call for the automaker's quality challenges, which had started as early as 2007. Toyota accelerator pedals started unexpectedly sticking in 2009, often trapping terrified drivers in skidding vehicles that tragically crashed. But was the vehicle the real source of the issue? Here is a brief history of the sticky pedal crisis. In 2009, a guy called 911 to report that his accelerator pedal was stuck and he was unable to stop the automobile. He said that his brakes weren't functioning. Finally, his car crashed with another vehicle before tumbling into a ravine because passengers were all killed. The 911 call gained notoriety and the controversy was made public. 90 persons are thought to have perished in Toyotas that unexpectedly accelerated over the following five years, with the NHTSA issuing a recall for 3.8 million vehicles for pedal entrapment brought on by stacked floor mats, followed by a January 2010 recall for 2.3 million and 1.1 million vehicles to remedy a sticky gas pedal issue. It is understandable that Toyota moved into panic mode. The widespread vehicle recalls sparked a media frenzy that gave Toyota a bad reputation for having major quality problems. Toyota's recalls of thousands of Prius and Lexus hybrid vehicles from February to August 2010 to fix software faults for braking issues and its recall of 1.7 million vehicles in January 2011 to address concerns unrelated to the earlier gas pedal issues have added fuel to the fire. The congressional hearings and subsequent recalls that occurred in January and February 2010 prompted extensive media coverage on all fronts. Numerous media were bent on making light of the pedal trapping and human error aspect and insisted that electrical bugs were the primary issue. Everything nearly went out of control until NASA, yep, the space agency, at the request of the US Congress, completed a 10-month investigation to uncover the potential electrical sources of unintentional acceleration. Toyota was charged with hiding information about the defective pedals despite recalling millions of vehicles. In order to escape punishment for concealing information regarding issues with unintended acceleration, which the FBI claimed Toyota knew was deadly, the firm paid $10 million to the Saylor family and $1.3 billion in a settlement with the US Justice Department in 2014. Two explanations at the time were put out to explain why these pedals started acting strangely. One was related to computer glitches, and the other was brought on by moving floor mats that caught the pedals. Gladwell, however, argues that the software explanation falls short in light of several studies demonstrating that using the brakes will cause a vehicle to come to a complete stop even when the driver is applying the maximum amount of throttle. Also, just a tiny percentage of accidents, according to a 2011 assessment by the Department of Transportation, were caused by floor mats. After hiring the best and brightest engineers to study Toyota's electronics systems, the Department of Transportation released the study's findings on February 9, 2011, and according to Michael Kirsch, Principal Engineer at the NASA Engineering and Safety Center NESC, the department found no evidence that a malfunction in electronics caused large unintended accelerations. The dealership installed floor liners from a Lexus SUV, causing it to jam the gas pedal and caused the car to go haywire, all pointing to human error, according to Toyota which also found that the unfortunate Lexus ES that killed Mark Saylor and his family had the incorrect set of floor mats installed, causing pedal entrapment. Who's really to blame? Human error. Drivers who complain that their accelerators are stuck are typically accidentally flooring the gas while mistakenly believing they are applying the brakes. The brakes were typically never even used, according to data from a large number of black boxes from vehicles involved in episodes of accidental acceleration. The drivers frequently drove cars that were new to them, or foreign to them, or for whatever reason, they just became confused. The reaction of the media was one of this whole ordeal's more aggravating features. The focus was on Toyota's cover-up, the terrifying and unpredictable software in automobiles, and of course the floor mats, rather than warning drivers about the possible risks of confusing the accelerator with the brake, which might happen to any of us. In light of the impending advent of self-driving cars, 
This distinction is crucial. Similarly, a self-driving Tesla driver was killed when his vehicle collided with a tractor trailer, causing the death of the driver. Many people were interested in learning why the technology failed, and there was suspicion that the sun's glare may have contributed to the problem. However, it's important to recognize how significantly human error contributed. Tesla claims that despite the fact that it has technologies to assist the driver in the event of an accident, the car is still intended for the driver to always maintain their hands on the wheel. That didn't happen in this scenario. In some ways, it may appear as though there are no other options. Automakers can plead with drivers to pay attention in these self-driving cars all they want, however, at the same time, these autopilot functions will likely lull most drivers into a deadly state of inaction. It seems like the arrangement will at least experience a few disasters, particularly when one considers the impact that the same scenario has had on aviation, such as in the terrible example of Flight 447, which crashed into the Atlantic Ocean while traveling from Rio de Janeiro to Paris due to human error. This is why it's so important to have a direct and honest discussion about how human error plays a part. Drivers too frequently anticipate ease of use from automakers and their products. However, as vehicles and automakers develop greater knowledge, drivers must also do so. Additionally, again another Tesla driver who was using the autopilot function lost control. A report of the incident claims that the automobile warned the driver to take the wheel because of unstable road conditions. However, he chose not to. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The driver, who claimed the collision was the fault of the vehicle, was not cited by a trooper who arrived on the scene. The federal government is currently looking into the limitations of the technology. Hopefully, they will take into account the major limitation. Humans Human beings cannot be expected to operate new automotive technology securely until we comprehend it and stop taking it for granted, and it necessitates an open discussion of the reasons why we make mistakes and, for whatever reason, fail to take the wheel when we ought to. Numerous automakers have experienced ups and downs throughout the years. At the moment, it could seem as though they are too huge or successful to fail, but they still do. Or at the very least, they become a tiny portion of what they once were. As seen by General Motors filing for bankruptcy 15 years ago, even industry titans like GM are not invincible. Toyota, on the other hand, has been one of those long-standing automakers that has been a success story for decades. This is a Japanese company that suddenly feels as American as Detroit's Big Three. Toyota has a lot of things to love, which is perhaps why they are as huge as they are today. And so, are you ready to buy a Toyota car? Or do you already have one? Comment your Toyota car in the comment section below. And if you've watched up to this point, thank you so much. For more videos about EVs, Toyota, Tesla, Ford, and the most recent auto news, please consider subscribing to Tech Addicts.